January 4th, uh, Copenhagen Suborbitals started the year with an uh, open house. We had approximately 200 people coming on a Sunday to see what we were up to this year. Bobanstop was demonstrating different kinds of electronics for the parachute and for the balloon tests. This is then the interface for, for the, um, the static tests of the motor. Mm -hmm. So it has a, a lot of channels for um, current loops, for, we use that for uh, pressure transducers. Mm -hmm. And we have thermocouple amplifiers. And then we have um, outputs for solenoids. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mads Steenfeldt from the parachute group was showing the progress on the balut and the different kinds of parachutes used for the Nexu rockets. We used this opportunity to show off a lot of the parts for the BPM-5. Here we see the, the load cell mount for the engine, and here Fleming Rasmussen is talking about the injector for the BPM-5 engine. All these holes, the fuel locks come in here, Ryger ud igennem de her syv huller her, passerer igennem alle de huller, som ikke er i den her injektor endnu. Den flydende alkohol kommer fra omstrømningskølingen op i den spalte her, hvor det vil mødes med de tilsvarende huller med loks i, blive forstøvet og blive til alt helvede i. The CS Museum has been made to show the progress of our rockets. It gives a good talking point when we're having tours, and generally people are very interested in seeing what we have been doing up till now. The bad thing about nitrous oxide is that it has a very high steam pressure. So Thomas Peterson is here talking about our previous rockets. It was that all the holes in the injector, uh, in, in this one there was, I think it was seven or nine mm -hmm. bigger holes, and they were plugged with uh, essentially a plastic plug. Mm -hmm. yeah. Carsten Olsen, who runs the CS Museum, had brought some of his, his personal V2 parts. These parts are interesting for CS because it's the same type of rocket engine as the BPM-5. It runs on oxygen and ethanol, and it's interesting to see that a 60-year-old design still has value. The fire damaged T2X has been restored. From here on it will be used to explain how the tank system works. We have cut up the fire damaged T2X engine. Here Morten Bulskov is talking about how a liquid rocket engine is working, ethanol and oxygen flow. As usual, we have the TDS2 capsule Betty on display and we give people the opportunity, especially children, to try how to be an astronaut. An integral part of Copenhagen's suborbitals are our vessels. The two vessels, Vostok and Sputnik, was visited by a lot of people and a lot of people were visiting Sputnik and experiencing how it is to be on board during a launch. Peter Scott had the opportunity to tell how the big V8 engine in Vostok works. Also on display was the submarine Nautilus. The leader of the Nautilus group, Jakob, is here talking about the restoration project and when we expect it to be in the water again. The stream team sends live from all CS tests. Here Peter Mask Müller is explaining how the stream software works and how we mix it and send it on the internet. Space exploration is all about history. We have a whole wall in the workshop dedicated to all people from the Russian and American space program, including of course our own rockets and pictures from our launches. 
after the visitors left, we talked about how the day went and of course also ended up talking rockets. A big thank you to all our visitors and sponsors for a very pleasant afternoon. You can read more about Copenhagen Submobiles on www.copshop.com. <laughs>